Hi, I'm uh, Zubin Garmani, and I'm delighted to be here at the Ray Summit talking about machine learning and AI at Uber. It's an incredibly exciting time for machine learning. Ex it's exciting because we have computer vision systems that can do amazing things that we didn't think were possible a few years ago. We have conversational AI systems in our homes doing speech recognition, dialogue, and translation. Um, we have scientific data analysis systems in genomics, bioinformatics, astronomy, even epidemiology based on machine learning. And of course, we have recommender systems that have been around for over 20 years, deeply dependent on machine learning. And finally, autonomous vehicles, which will change the way our cities and our lives operate, um, are hopefully just around the corner and uh, are heavily dependent on machine learning. Now, a lot of these advances in machine learning have happened because of a revolution in machine learning that I'm sure everybody knows about called deep learning. And I wanna spend a couple of minutes talking about deep learning because it's relevant to the rest of the talk. Now, deep learning is uh, basically neural networks from the 80s and 90s, where you're trying to learn a function from some inputs to some outputs through layers of tunable uh, nonlinearities. And it's called deep because you have multiple layers of processing and uh, the way these systems work is that you try to reduce error on some training data by tweaking the weights in the deep architecture. Now, um, deep learning systems are really similar to the stuff that we had in the 80s and 90s, which is actually when I got into the field, but there's some architectural and algorithmic innovations, ways of making these models um, have more layers or better regularization, different types of nonlinearity. Importantly, one of the differences is we now have vastly larger data sets. We have web scale data. And along with that, we have vastly larger compute resources, data centers with GPUs, TPUs, IPUs on the cloud, vastly increased industry investment, a much larger community working on these things, a lot of media hype around the field. But finally, I also wanna highlight that we have a lot of great open source software tools now that we didn't have 10 or 20 years ago. And this will come back and be really important for the Uber story. Now, the deep learning literature is bewildering. There are literally thousands of papers on deep learning coming up every month. But there are seven key ideas I wanna get across for why deep learning has been successful. First of all, very large models can work well. This is somewhat counterintuitive from classical statistics, but actually, you know, in non-parametric statistics that's been around since the 70s, people were already thinking about models with infinitely many parameters. So this isn't that alien. Deep learning people threw out the window those small models that people were working on before. But to learn a huge model with tens or hundreds of millions of parameters, you also need huge data sets, these vast data sets I talked about. And in some domains like games, for example, you don't have real data, so you can create simulated data. The third idea I wanna highlight is automatic differentiation. And this is really important. This has made people's lives a lot easier. And we'll come back to this because they're also analogs to some of the work that we're doing recently on this. Uh, a fourth idea I wanna highlight is that if you wanna make a model deep, each layer should be allowed to do almost nothing. And that's called the identity function, the maps from X to X. If you stack a bunch of those together, you can get a deep trivial model, but a lot of interesting deep models stay close to the identity through tricks like using ReLUs, LSTMs, GRUs, um, uh, ResNets. All of these are either deep in layers or deep dependencies in time are captured by these models. The fifth idea is that stochastic optimization works surprisingly well, things like SGD and adaptive variance. There's a lot of great theory around that. A sixth idea is that better initialization matters. So if you initialize your deep learning method with poor initial conditions, it might take a long time to learn, but a lot of those default initialization methods make it so that you can actually learn pretty well. The last idea I wanna highlight is parameter time. And that's this idea 
that um, is even more fundamental than convolution that's been around since like hidden Markov models, at least in the 1970s, also occurs in recurrent networks, recursive networks, et cetera. And it's the idea that if you wanna capture certain invariances or equivariances in the data or certain non-stationarities, uh, sorry, stationarities in the data, then you wanna tie your parameters um, through the network or over time. So those are those seven key ideas that I think uh, might be interesting to think about next time you read a deep learning paper. Now, deep learning is not the panacea that we were hoping for. It's not gonna solve all our AI problems. In fact, there's some important limitations of deep learning. Deep learning is very data hungry and compute intensive. It's really poor at representing uncertainty. And this is something that really bothers me because to solve complex decision-making problems, we need to have systems that know when they don't know. Deep learning systems are uninterpretable black boxes, lacking in transparency and difficult to trust. And that can be problematic for regulatory reasons, legal reasons, even ethical or debugging reasons. And finally, deep learning systems are easily fooled by adversarial examples, which means that if you can perturb the inputs of the system very carefully, you can get the output to be almost anything you want and um, it will output that very confidently which just makes you think that the whole system is operating quite unintuitively. Now, I'm gonna switch gears and talk about AI and machine learning at Uber. First thing to highlight is that machine learning is really fundamental to Uber. And the broad definition of machine learning we're gonna use is that um, you're mapping from any system that maps from data to algorithms, predictions and optimized decisions um, is a machine learning or AI system. And with that broad definition, modeling ETAs, traffic events and the complex dynamics of cities, predicting driver supply and rider demand, natural language and customer service, fraud detection, enhancing safety, even the signal processing modeling that we do to improve location, of course, autonomous vehicles, optimized pricing incentives, all of these things are instances of machine learning. In fact, Uber is a giant machine intelligence problem and it's a particularly challenging problem because we're trying to optimize and navigate the real world with all the uncertainty that, that brings, which is a quote from Dara, our CEO. Uber's machine learning challenges are particularly unique and interesting because Uber lives at the interface between the digital world and the physical world. So the machine learning problems that we have involve spatio-temporal modeling in real time and real physical space and the decisions we make really matter to people. We also operate by interacting with a complex network of many agents with complex economic incentives. So our machine learning systems are um, embedded in a network of uh, behavioral models, economic models, and so on operating together. Optimization is really central to our mission. We optimize the movement of people and things in the world. And we do this to create efficiencies and opportunities for people. Um, and finally, we need to adapt to a rapidly changing world. Now to solve all of these challenges, we need a range of AI, machine learning and data science expertise. So from deep learning to probabilistic modeling, simulation, optimization, active learning, time series, causal inference. And at Uber, we have a great diversity of expertise and techniques to solve all of these problems. The machine learning at Uber is uh, all of our models or almost all of our models live on top of our ML platform. So let me talk about our platform a little bit. Our machine learning platform is called Michelangelo and it serves all of the phases of the machine learning life cycle from getting the data to training the models, evaluating models, deploying to production, the prediction service itself, monitoring afterwards. And it can do this both online for real-time streaming data and real-time predictions and offline for sort of batch machine learning problems. 
And it's heavily based on open source software, as you can probably spot in this diagram here. The scale of use of machine learning is intense at Uber. We have thousands uh, of daily, uh, sorry, weekly active users of our data science workbench, uh, Jupyter Notebook based uh, machine learning prototyping system. But we also have uh, much more sophisticated production systems where there are 36,000 models trained per month. There are 12,000 models deployed to production per month and our average um, QPS for serving machine learning predictions is over a million. And all of these metrics are growing. We have more than 3000 models that are in our tier one and tier two. These are sort of the most important machine learning models. And these serve things like Rider, ETA, um, the uh, reducing cancellation rates, the dispatch cancel models, improving matching, um, our eats products for restaurant and dish recommendation and our safety products for reducing interpersonal conflicts and other safety incidents. And all of these models operate at tens of thousands of predictions per second. As I mentioned, we rely a lot on open source, but we've also developed some very important open source projects that we've contributed to the community. And these include Horovod, which is a distributed deep learning uh, system, Ludwig, which is a code-free deep learning system, and Pyro, which is a public, probabilistic programming system. And let me just try to explain Pyro. So Pyro does essentially what automatic differentiation did to deep learning. Pyro does the same sort of thing to probabilistic modeling. What it does, like other probabilistic programming languages, is that it creates an abstraction layer where you can define your probabilistic model as a computer program that generates data as a simulator. That's your model. And the layer of abstraction below that is a universal inference engine that can take your model and do inference in any hidden variables or parameters of your model given observed data. And you can automate all of that so that you don't have to compute Bayes rule or inference methods yourself. You just have to specify the model. Now, this is really revolutionary, well beyond AI and machine learning. So any field of science or engineering that depends on modeling or simulation can make use of probabilistic programming languages. And there is a review paper here at the bottom for, from five years ago that um, you could look at if you're interested in this. Now, Pyro combines the best of both worlds in deep learning and probabilistic modeling. On the deep learning side, it's dependent on PyTorch. So any deep learning model that can be implemented in PyTorch can be also implemented in Pyro. And on the probabilistic modeling side, it's a universal probabilistic program. So any computable probability distribution can be represented as a Pyro program. And we open sourced this a couple of years ago. We'll have a look at the, the software and the blog if you're interested in this. <clears throat> I mentioned that optimization is central to Uber's mission. And I wanted to just highlight a lot of the work that we've been doing in an area called Bayesian or model-based optimization. So the pseudocode that you see on this slide is a general optimizer. This is how you generically do optimization of a function f. And the thing I want you to look at is what's at the bottom of this pseudocode a part of it that says you analyze the history of the places where you've evaluated, and then you figure out where to evaluate your function next. And Bayesian optimization tackles both of those in a really interesting way. So if evaluating your function f is expensive, then it's really worth spending time analyzing your history and building a model, a probabilistic model of your function f. This is called the surrogate that's based on all your history. So machine learning or modeling is part of the optimization loop, but also to figure out where to evaluate next, you have to treat that as a sequential decision-making problem under uncertainty. So you think very carefully about where to evaluate your function next. Our Bayesian optimization platform is called AutoTune, 
And we use that to tune many thousands of machine learning models at Uber. And we've uh, obtained really significant lifts in the performance of those machine learning models. But Auto-Tune is used not just for improving machine learning, it can also be used to improve the business logic and other parameters of our systems at Uber. So finally, I wanna just wrap up with a brief tour of some application areas, some just a vignette of different things that we do at Uber. So of course, we have a major effort in autonomous vehicles that's heavily dependent on machine learning. But we also use machine learning to drive our food discovery in Uber Eats. And here we combine deep learning, graph-based machine learning, and tree-based methods to improve our recommendation systems. And finally, um, we are deeply committed to safety and a lot of our applications of machine learning in the area of computer vision are to help identify and verify documents and to verify driver identity. So with that, I'm just gonna conclude. AI and machine learning are essential to Uber and our AI problems are really unique. Our AI algorithms enhance all aspects of our business and finally, our AI and machine learning teams help us be resilient to a very dynamic changing world. So thank you very much. I look forward to questions in the Q&A.